just uh, laughing at uh, a post uh, uh, from a friend uh, uh, in the internet uh, because I'm trying to learn Swedish and it was a Swedish comedian uh, talking about how difficult German is and it reminded me of a quote from Mark Twain who said uh, uh, he finally understood what eternity is about because that's what you need to master the complex uh, grammar of German. Uh, well, <laughs> I reckon I speak reasonably good German. Uh, I was married to my dear late wife for uh, uh, 22 blissful years and in that time uh, I think I managed to master the language reasonably and also I was a teacher at a school in Switzerland which is the German speaking region near Zurich uh, but their German is a bit more akin to Glaswegian English so uh, that's not a test of speaking uh, high German. Um, but uh, a lot of Swedish words are very similar to German words. Uh, some of them are similar to Scottish dialect funnily enough uh, but very many technical Swedish words are similar to German words, but importantly, their word order is much more like English, which is a lot easier. For example, um, if you uh, want to say in uh, uh, um, uh, Swedish, uh, I play football, it's Jag uh, spiller fotball. Uh, in German, ich spiele Fußball. Okay, so it's uh, all okay so far. But uh, the problem starts when you have to use what's called modal verbs or help verbs, uh, they call them sometimes at school. So if I would say I must play football in Swedish, it's very similar. Ja must spiele Fußball. Uh, but in German, ich muss spiele Fußball is wrong and Germans will laugh at you for your bad grammar. Uh, because as soon as there is a, a modal verb, the, all the other verbs must go to the end of the sentence. And this is what Mark Twain was uh, complaining about when he wrote about the awful uh, German language. So, uh, for example, I, uh, ich muss Fußball spielen. Okay, that's not too bad. But when the sentences start to get more complex, then uh, uh, <laughs> it can get really complicated. And if you watch German TV and watch newsreaders, well, of course, it's like in Britain, the newsreaders have to speak correctly. They have to speak Hochdeutsch or what we would call in English received pronunciation or BBC English um, because most Germans uh, don't really give that much credence to absolute correct grammar they just uh, speak slang like most of us do um, but you'll notice that German news readers start to go blue in the face because they can't take a breath because they're saving up uh, to breathe until they've got all these verbs out and then they have to take a massive breath at the end of the sentence. Well, what do I actually mean? Well, take a complex sentence like, he must hate his father because he didn't want him to want to know how to learn to dance in dance school. Just say it again. He must hate his father because he didn't want him to want to know how to learn in, to dance in dance school. And I've actually uh, paraphrased this off a Swedish comedian uh, uh, who made a funny video about it. So in uh, Swedish, it's also a little difficult. Han måste ha till sin fader med en den i ikke ville låta honom gå i dansskola for at kunne lære sig at danse. Uh, well, it's sort of okay, and you sort of have to take a bit of a deep breath at the end, but in German. Um, well, first of all, let's just list the modal verbs in German. You've got können, which is could, mögen, which is want to, sollen, which is should, wollen, which is uh, want, um, and wissen, which is uh, 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 to know. Uh, mergen and wollen. Uh, mergen actually means to like, to like, to want, uh, sort of. 
Um, so in German it would be, er muss seinen Vater hassen, weil er ihn nicht in der Tanzschule, um tanzen zu lernen können, mögen, sollen, wollen, wissen. <lacht> <laughs> and uh, watch, uh, if you've got satellite TV, watch German TV and you'll see the newsreaders actually doing this. Um, I believe they also do it in the north of Sweden, which uh, I believe there's a bit more German influence up there as well, so maybe that's the explanation. Um, the other thing, of course, that Mark Twain uh, complained about with Germany is you get these massively long uh, combined nouns, and that could also be quite a bit challenging. So the, one of the famous ones is Danube Steamship Company Captain's Cabin Keyhole. Say it again, Danube Steamship Company's Captain's Cabin Keyhole. And that would come out as Donald Dampschiff Fahrt Gesellschaftskapitäns Kajuten Schlüsselloch. Which I'll try it again. Donald Dampschiff Fahrt Gesellschaftskapitäns Kajuten Schlüsselloch. Well, English uh, people can't say the German who with an umlaut, so I apologise to my German friends. But uh, uh, such is the fun of learning a language. So. Uh, Bye for now in English, in Swedish, hey do, and in German, tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Oh, uh, I'm not gone just quite yet. Um, um, funny story, if you want to know how I got to learn a bit of German in the first place, uh, I have a German surname, but actually my father was Polish. Um, I learnt some very basic German at school, uh, but uh, when I was a young man, I got a job... Um, playing in a, a band in Britain uh, to copy the German beer keller bands and we used to work for the brewery and promote lager beer way back in the 70s and uh, the band was called the Bavarian Steinswingers and we used to pretend to be Germans wearing uh, shorts and uh, I would uh, play my accordion and uh, actually found some recordings of stuff we did so uh, I know a few other members of the band they're still around and uh, they became teachers as well as it happens uh, so apologies to them if I post a photo up uh, of the band and the intro music you heard was uh, the German march uh, under the double eagle which is copyright free nowadays uh, so we'll fade out with uh, a bit of the Bavarian Stein Swingers. Yeah! Eins, zwei, drei!